You've written a piece about one of the lawyers representing the business elite backing the coup makers. Um, who is the lawyer in question and why is he so important? Uh, the lawyer in question is uh, a not, not unknown lawyer named Lanny Davis, the guy, the quote unquote, the lawyer that saved Bill Clinton during his impeachment hearings. Mm -hmm. Mr. Davis worked for an ORIC law firm that's been retained by uh, a group called the Latin American Business Council of Honduras. And uh, he's been retained to provide lobbying, media, and public relations. Thing. Now, uh, the group that I mentioned earlier, uh, COFADE, the Committee of Families of the Detained and Disappeared, also issued statements uh, linking members that are actually the people, families that hired Mr. Davis to the whole history of killings, uh, disappearances, torture that took place in the, in the early 80s. Uh, and so under, under the auspices of an organization called APRO, the Association, the Alliance for Progress of Honduras, which was kind of a combination of business elites and the military coming together. And so the, 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 the groups in, in Honduras will claim that Mr. Davis, one of them told me, uh, Jose Luis Galdames, when I interviewed him, he was in, he was in hiding. And he told me that uh, he wishes Mr. Davis could come and uh, uh, to Honduras so he could show him who who who's who's behind the coup, the powers that be and behind the coup. Uh, he this uh, Mr. Gardames and others tell me are people like the people that hired uh, Mr. Davis, uh, uh, Jorge Canawati and Camilo Atala and others who own pretty much everything. Like four to ten percent of the population in Honduras owns forty two percent of. Uh, all the resources and, and income. And so uh, Mr. Davis, they claim, is representing that 10% to the loss of uh, the 90% of the population. Uh, Andres, there have been some hearings about this on Capitol Hill, and Lanny Davis has spoken to, on the matter. How does he explain himself? It's hard to know how he explains himself because, uh, for instance, the coup itself was such an illegal act. The, the army is not allowed to detain anyone in Honduras, and yet it was the army who went to the home of President Celaya at 5.30 in the morning, and in his pajamas they captured him and kicked him out of the country. They have since said that, in fact, maybe there was a law that was violated when the president was exiled uh, to Costa Rica. However, they are justifying, and Lanny Davis is one of them, who is justifying these criminal acts that have been committed by this coup regime. So it's really difficult to understand why the Obama administration is not taking a stronger position in terms of you know, putting trade uh, a trade embargo mm -hmm. against Honduras. They've been doing it for decades against Cuba. Why not try it against this illegal coup regime? And what the about the, the what do you make, Andres, of the charges that the business elite to whom Lanny Davis represents make and the coup makers make against Celaya that he was illegally trying to amend the Constitution to perpetuate his rule without elections? What they accuse him of is something which is absolutely ridiculous because he has never, ever stated that he wants to extend his term as president. What he has wanted to do, he, he began the very first day when he was elected president, and that is in January of the year 2006, he pushed for passing legislation that is incorporating participatory democracy in a much more active way. And the, late, the last step in this direction was to ask for the people's opinion a straw poll, a non-binding referendum asking what the people wanted in terms of changing the Constitution. The elite interpreted this as a way for him to extend his presidential term. And on the very day of that referendum, that non-binding straw poll on the 28th of June is when they undertook this violent coup against him. Mm. Did you, have you talked to Lenny Davis directly? I spoke to Mr. Davis and I asked him, uh, what he, how he felt about representing a government that's repudiated by most governments in the world, the United Nations, the OAS, the European Union. And he told me that uh, he put the onus on, on President Celaya. He said that, um, you know, he's proud to represent uh, businessmen who respect the rule of law and that, res that are supporting uh, Clinton and mm. Arias-sponsored talks. And uh, he said his biggest concern is the... Uh, safety and security of enduring people, when he told me this, and I mentioned it to uh, the man who was in hiding, he laughed. This is when he invited Mr. Davis to undo us.